Welcome back! In this video, we are going to dive deeper into the concept of data in C Sharp. Let's go to Visual Studio and start with our weapon script and in the update our call to transform the rotate around. I have mentioned that inside those parentheses, we are passing data to this rotate around method. At the end, we are passing this 200 multiplied by time dot delta time to define how much we should rotate each frame. Now I would like to modify the rotation speed so this 200. So let's go up towards the opening bracket of the public class weapon statement. So this code block, we are going to use enter to make a new line and we are going to define here the data representing this 200. So public int and we are going to call this rotation. And I'm going to type with capital S speed. I'm going to use equal sign and I'm going to type 200. And let's not forget about the semicolon at the end. What we did here is define the rotation speed variable of type int that is public. And we have assigned to it a value of 200. Now the rotation speed is its name. So if we go to start and let's delete this update call and we are going to type rotation speed, we can access this variable defined above. Now int is the type, it stands for integer, which means that we can store as int integer values like 0, minus 1, 2 or any other integer value. Now we can access it inside our method, so let's go down to the update method and here we are going to, instead of typing 200, we are going to call rotation speed times time the delta time. Since now we cannot really see the full line of code that I have, I'm going to just use enter and move this part where we pass the data inside the parentheses to the next line and again C Sharp will be able to handle it because our semicolon is at the end. Okay great, so let's save our script Control S and let's go back to Unity. Now if you press play, nothing will really change. So what was the point of adding this extra line of code? If you go back to Unity while well, the game is still running and select your weapon in the hierarchy, in the inspector you will see that now our weapon script has this rotation speed field and if we modify it by selecting it and typing on our keyboard something like 10 you're going to see in the game view or in the scene view that the square is moving much slower so by giving objects data we can control their behavior let's go back to unity let's stop our game and let's go to the hierarchy window here we are going to use this plus button to add another 2d object sprites let's select for example triangle now in the game view we can move it using our move tool and we are going to move it to the left from our circle and in the hierarchy we can right click on it and rename it to weapon and I'm going to call this weapon 2. And now go back to the projects tab, find the weapon script and drag it onto the weapon 2. We have now created a second object of type weapon using our weapon class definition. This means that we can select our weapon 2 and set the rotation speed to something like 50 and if we select weapon uh, without an index, we will see that the, its rotation speed stays on 200. Let's press play and we should now see that both of those objects are moving, reusing the same functionality of movement, but their speed is different because we set it through the data. So this means that both weapon objects are sharing the same movement behavior from our weapon class, but their data is separate so they can have different rotation speeds. So the class is just defining what an object of type weapon should have, but it is not an object itself. And that is the difference between class and object in C Sharp. Back in our code, we need to discuss what is this public keyword. So we have defined our rotation speed as public. This means that not only we can set the rotation through the inspector of Unity, but we could also create some weapon changer script that has a reference to public. Weapon. Weapon. And in its method, it could change the weapon.rotation speed to, for example, zero. So other scripts in our project can access and modify the rotation speed and that might not be something that you want to have. To fix that, what we can do is select our rotation speed and change the public to be private. And now if I save my script, Ctrl S, 
and go to my other script that accesses the weapon, you will see that it can't really access it. Weapon dot rotation speed is inaccessible due to protection level. So I can't really do that. At the same time in Unity, if we select our weapon, you will no longer see the rotation speed appearing in the inspector. So to fix that, we are going to go above the private int rotation speed and add uh, open the square brackets, serialize, build with capital S and capital F and close square brackets. And this is called an attribute. If we save our script and go back to Unity and select a weapon in the hierarchy, in the inspector you will still see the rotation speed appearing, but other scripts will not be able to modify this value. We are not going to discuss how attributes works in c because it is unimportant right now for you, but serialized field is an attribute that you need to know about and what it does. Now for our rotation speed we have used int data type. Let's discuss what are other data types in c that we commonly use in our games. We have already discussed int, which is an integer and can be 0, minus 1 or 1, for example. We can also have a float, which is a floating point value, something like 3, 14, and we add f to define a floating point value. And we have 0.5f, minus 0.1 or some larger value with a floating point values after a dot. Next, we can have a bool which is useful to represent conditions, so it can take a value false or true, and this can be useful when checking for something. And last type that is commonly used is a string type, which can store text, and we represent it as uh, equals quotation marks, and we write text in between those quotation marks, and this basically represents text. Now, obviously, there are other types and those are the most common ones that we use most often. Next, let's discuss what is the scope. So in our start method, we can access our rotation speed and we can set it to 100 and this works fine. This is because our start method is inside of the scope of our weapon class. So inside the code block and the code block defines the scope. So for weapon, uh, those are the, the those two uh, curly brackets. And for the start, those are those two curly brackets. This code block defines the scope that the start method owns. Let me delete this line. Now if I go to the update method, and here I'm going to define a float, rotation, amount with capital A, and I'm going to type it as rotation, speed, time, so the asterisk sign, time, with capital T, dot, delta, and with capital T time and semicolon at the end. Now here I have defined a float data variable, so rotation amount, and it is inside the scope of the update method. If we try going to the start method and try typing rotation amount, we do not have any auto completion and let's set it to be 10. And we can see the name rotation amount does not exist in current context. Now, just to be sure, let's copy this name control C and let's paste it here. And nothing happens. This happens because the rotation amount is in scope of the update method to which our start method has no access. So start method cannot access rotation amount, but it can access the rotation speed because the start belongs to the scope of the class weapon, so it has access to all the variables defined in the scope of our weapon class. We do this because our rotation amount defined in our update is useful only to the code that is defined in the code block of our update method. Also, we may not want any other method to modify the rotation amount value, and that's why we define it in the scope that is enclosed inside our update rather than in the global scope of our class weapon. Back in Visual Studio, let me remove this line of code from start method. And what we can do with this rotation amount, why we have put it here is we can move it so we can type it instead of this rotation speed times time to the delta time inside the call to rotate around. So let's type rotation amount. And we can now move back our line of code because now it is much shorter as well as this is much more readable because we know now this is rotation amount. We pass the rotation amount to the rotate around method. 
Well, this Vector 3.0 doesn't tell us much, so we are not sure what it exactly is. Now, why didn't we add public or private in front of our rotation amount? Well, in C Sharp, we have something called accessibility levels, and those are the keywords public, private, and some others that specifies what is the restriction to access the members of our class. So, for example, public has no restrictions, while protected, which we didn't use, has access is limited to the containing class. So, in our script, we have defined our rotation speed as a class variable, and we have set it to be private because we do not want other classes to be able to access it, but we want to set it through the inspector, so we add serialized field attribute. In turn, our methods that are also members of our weapon class are by default treated as private. But if we do not put anything, compiler will automatically add the private keyword or treat the update as a private method. Other scripts in our project will not be able to access the methods and the data that is private of our weapon script. And going back to the rotation amount, we have defined it inside the scope of the update method. So only the code inside the update method can actually access it. And if we try adding here public accessibility modifier, it will cause an error because there is no way that any class or actually the weapon class itself can access the variable defined inside the method. Okay, with that out of the way, let's discuss the math operators in C Sharp. So basic math operations are addition. So one plus one will be equal to two. Another one will be the subtraction. So one minus one will basically give us zero as you might have expected. Another one we, that we have used already is multiplication 0.5. We note that we can define a float value just by typing dot and the value after it. And with f multiplied, so asterisk by 2f, it should give us the value of 1. And lastly, we can also have a division. So this will give us float division uh, equals 1f divided by 2.0f. This is another way that we can define a float value and this should give us 0.5f, so a float value. There are more math operators available, but there is one caveat to making math operations in the code and defining the type that it returns. I am inside .NET Fiddle, which is an online c uh, editor, and I'm going to just create int uh, a equals 1 divided by 2. And I'm going to use semicolon, and I'm going to print it in the console.write line Instead of this hello world, I'm going to type A and I'm going to use run. What did it return? Well, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, but it returned 0. And this is because I have used integer value as a type and this returns only integers. So 1 divided by 0 is 0 0.5 and it rounds it down to 0. Now, if we change it to float and type 1f, for example, and run it again, we're going to see that it returns half because now I have used a float type, so floating point value. So this is a very common bug among beginners and it is very easy to make. So just remember that the type that you save the variable in is very important, as well as the values that you use for the math operations. Sometimes they need to be floating point values, so have f at the end of their definition. Last data type that I want to introduce you to is a vector 3 that is a data type defined by Unity, so it is Unity specific, not available in all c -sharp, uh, programming environments. And it represents a 3D vector or point in a 3D space. In our script, our weapon script, we have used it inside the update. We have typed vector3.0, which returns a vector3 with uh, only zeros in it. To define a vector3, we can type vector3 value, and we are going to define it as a new vector 3 and we can pass 0, 0, 0 and this is how we define a vector 3 and this is using this new keyword instead of what we have used so far, so just typing equals 200. Now, unless you only work with numbers and text, you will probably use new most of the time to create objects in Unity. But for now, I want to leave it at that. I will explain more about this keyword when we go to the practical section when we make our 2D game together. Now, instead of this new keyword, we can also use vector 3.01 or any other predefined value that Unity has provided for us so that we do not have to type those values by hand. But that's not what we want to do here. We want to go up 
to the scope of our class just below our rotation speed and let's create a serialized field private vector 3 and we are going to uh, define it as a rotation point with capital P and we are going to set it to be equal to vector 3.0 and semicolon at the end and now we can use this and pass it inside our update to the transform that rotate around as the vector 30 as a first parameter. So let's type rotation point, use enter to use uh, the IntelliSense auto completion. And now you can see that already rotate around is much more clear because we have the rotation point. Vector 3.forward is a bit strange because we have no idea what it is. And rotation amount is again clear because we know exactly what it is by reading its name. Let's save the script using Ctrl S because there is an additional benefit. If you go back to Unity, we can select our weapon 2 for example, and let's change its uh, rotation point in the inspector because now we can do that. We are going to set the X value to be something like 2 and Y value to be something like minus 1. Okay, now the weapon the without an index still has its own rotation point, so it gives us a bit more control over how those will behave. Let's press play and now you will see that the triangle or the weapon 2 is rotating around a different point than our square, the default weapon, and this is the difference that we have achieved. To summarize, data is useful not only to store values but also to control the behaviors of separate objects in our game. In the next video we are going to discuss how we can add methods to our script. See you in the next video.